What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into the first full week of November in 2019. I also want to break down with you all what the stock market futures are looking like right now, because they opened up about 50 minutes ago here at 6pm Eastern Standard, and I also want to break down what the market in terms of the S&P did last week, so we can kind of see and kind of project the technicals to get a better understanding of what could potentially happen in this upcoming week. I also want to talk to you guys about, like you read in the title, natural gas, guys, because it saw yet again another pop-up today, another gap up of around 3% at the time that I'm recording this video, which is pretty crazy, right? So before we do get into that, quick announcement for those of you guys that didn't catch it in the, in the previous couple of videos, tomorrow, November 4th, at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Strive Smart merch store is going to be live. And if you're on that email list, I'm doing something special. I'm going to be sending you the password to the store so you can actually get into the store before it launches. And I'm going to be sending that password at about 10 p.m. <clears throat> Eastern Standard Time. So if you're not already on that email list, hit that first link down below, sign up for the email list. And again, I will send you the password at 10 a.m. so you can go to the store and support the brand, support me, buy something if you want to. And if you don't want to, that's 100% okay as well. So all of those links are down below the store link. Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that good stuff. And if you do end up buying something, guys, just know I truly appreciate you. So without further ado, let's just get right into it here. Taking a look at the S&P this past Friday, we did very, very well, up $29.35, up 1%. So I kind of want to see, you know, what was the performance of the S&P in the past five days, which was last week? Well, we can see here, we were kind of trading between 3027, which which was once an all-time high, right? That was the kind of uh, the support that we were holding. And the resistance was at about 30, 48, 30, 50, right? So for the first four days of the trading session or the trading week, you know, we were kind of in this horizontal channel trading between 30, 27, 30, 45, 30, 50, not really moving too much. But then on Friday, we got that good jobs report. I believe it was... Uh, 118,000 jobs in the month of October, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that sprung the market up, as you guys can see, right? <clears throat> very bullish move here, ended up gapping above 3048, and now we're riding that 50 SMA, running up to all-time highs, and we closed very strongly at the last uh, couple minutes, you know, into the bell on Friday at about 3066. So the fact that we broke out of 3050, we're holding that 50 SMA on the 5-day, five 5 minute, and we closed very aggressively to the upside, I think that is extremely bullish for the S&P, and I honestly believe, guys, that in the short term, this market Market has a lot more to run. Maybe not a lot more to run, but I think it can definitely continue to run here in the short term. And let's say maybe we see a pullback, right? As you guys can see by this arrow, it would be healthy, right? Because the markets have been running up so crazily recently. So if it cools down, watch to see where it finds support, whether it's 3050, which is an old resistance, you know, it could potentially hold that as a new support, right? Or maybe it sells off from there and uh, maybe finds support on the 50 SMA. But then again, guys, you know, the 50 SMA will probably be somewhere here tomorrow. So then again, if we pull down, we might hold 3050, which will be right at that 50 SMA. So overall, you know, very, very clear that 3050 is the support that you want to keep an eye on. So let's take a look at these futures now. And again, they open up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. And the futures right now, they're up $4.50. Nothing too crazy, up about 0.15%. Kind of just continuing that strong um, um, uh, close that we saw on Friday. And these are the E-mini S&P futures. Slash ES is the ticker for those of you guys that do want to put this into your Thinkorswim platform or whatever uh, charting software that you use. So up $4.50, 
the fact that we are gapping up green here, that's a good sign. So what I'm interested in seeing is, will this hold into tomorrow's session? If it does, right, in the morning especially, we could definitely be running up in the morning. I think that is possible. So taking a look at slash NQ, which is the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ futures, these are currently continuing their run up as well, up 16 points right now, up 0.2%. So I'd wait and see tomorrow morning, what are we doing if these futures are pulling down we may be selling off to about 8160 this could be a potential dip buy if you're into trading uh, an ETF such as TQQQ which goes up whenever the NASDAQ goes up right and I think if we pull down hold that level TQQQ could definitely be an interesting entry um, especially if you're into trading ETFs um, that trade based upon the NASDAQ right so that's kind of what I'm looking at there nothing crazy again guys we've seen gap up days where the futures are up like literally 2%. So if we see something like 0.1%, it's kind of like, ah, okay, you shrug it off and you wait till, till, until the next day, right? But we can see here, Dow Jones, 44 points in the green right now, up 0.16%. And um, yeah, nothing really much to say. I just keep an eye on these futures tomorrow. Like I always say in these videos, you know, heading into the market open, what are large caps doing? You know, what stocks are reporting earnings, you know, in this case during earnings season, you know, these are some things that could fluctuate the markets in general. So without talking any more about these overall markets, let's get into the bread and butter, the meat and potatoes of the video. What am I looking to trade, guys? You guys saw in the title... <clears throat> natural gas ridiculous gap up right and for those of you guys that don't know I'm actually in UNG calls right now that expire I believe uh crap when do they expire I believe the 29th of November 21 bucks was my strike price so I'm already in the money right now I'm up like I forget in terms of percentage but you know with natural gas gapping up as aggressively as it is right now I should wake up to a pretty sweet little push up there in those UNG calls and for all of you that held you guys over the weekend you're most likely if this holds you're most likely going to wake up pretty green tomorrow right and let's break down some technicals that I'm looking at here on natural gas and we could see up eight cents up three percent up to two dollars and eighty cents at one point a couple minutes ago like 10 20 minutes ago before I recorded this video started recording this video these were up to 280 something right so this is a ridiculous gap up let's pull up that one year one day chart and kind of zoom in a bit here to see what we're working with so these levels that you guys see these lines are previous support Ports and previous resistances. Now that we've broken above literally every single one, right? We gapped up above 270. We just gapped up above the next level, which is 280. Now we have to draw out some new levels to see, hey, where could natural gas potentially be going here in the short term? And based on this level right here, guys, you know, we could be in store for a potential 8 to 10 cent gap up here if we fill the gap up to the next level level, which again is about 288 to 290. This is something that could very well happen with how bullish natural gas has been here over the past couple of weeks. But let me explain to you what I think could potentially happen here and what I kind of want to happen here, right? So you can see now, let me switch my tools very quickly. But you can see now that natural gas is a bit overbought, right? Our size overbought. Again, we gapped up above 280. Now, ideally, what I'd like to see... You know, if we pull down and maybe hold 276, 277, which is about three, four cents below from where we are right now, right? If we pull down there and maybe see a pull down in the RSI to a healthier spot, maybe like 60 bucks or not 60 bucks, like 55 to 60 area on the RSI, this could be a nice little dip on natural gas where if, if we can time it correctly tomorrow heading into the market open, if this kind of pans out, if it doesn't make the move pre market or something, which it does do that sometimes and we miss out on the move. But if this move is made in the morning, right, we get a pull down, maybe 275, maybe even down to 272 again, that'd be kind of nice, right? If we get any sort of pullback, we find some sort of support, what we can do is hop into UGAS, which goes up whenever natural gas is going up at a dip 
price, right? Because at this point, if we go to that one hour chart, guys, this thing might be gapping up to 1830 at least tomorrow, right? Even above that. So if we break above that, maybe pull down to 1830, maybe 1775, that could be the dip entry that we want on you guys. And again, if natural gas finds that bottom somewhere and uh, starts to truck back up, that's if it pulls back, right? Let's say it doesn't even pull back, which is possible as well. Let's say we just simply run up and uh, just continue running up. Maybe we can find a momentum play from 280 to 288 and trade you guys that way. So at this point, again, I'm in UNG calls, so I'm probably going to be up nice on those tomorrow. I'm not planning on selling those tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. But in terms of you guys, I'd just be very patient at this point. See what it does because, again, it's overbought. Maybe we pull down, get a better entry. I definitely wouldn't get like a, a case of FOMO here and just hop in right away when the market opens. I think that's a bit risky. I want to wait and see, you know, if it fiddles out. If I was already in you guys, um, you know, uh, this past Friday, let's say, for example, I'd definitely be taking profits tomorrow. But yeah, I'm just playing it by ear, seeing what happens. That's kind of my goal right now on natural gas and you gas. So the next stock I want to talk about is PayPal, PYPL. So PayPal, Visa, both of these companies, they're not really, um, um, uh, they're, I guess you can say they're correlated. They're similar companies and they both reported earnings and both of them are in an interesting spot, right? Visa is an in in an interesting spot, you know, if it breaks above 180. But what I like about PayPal more than Visa is it has a lot more room to run, in my opinion, based on previous resistances, right? If we just draw out some levels here, guys, to get an understanding of where this thing may be going, you know, 111 is a level that I'm looking at, right? 113, 114-ish is a level I'm looking at as well. 117 is another level. And of course, that rough area of the all-time high, 122, that's another level that I'm looking at. And one thing that's good about PayPal now is, again, they reported good earnings. We're breaking out of these moving average resistances, both the 180 and the 50 SMA. And now we're actually at a little dip point where... If we end up holding this point where we are right now, which you can see it's on top of the moving averages as a support level, this could be the higher low that we need before we end up launching up to that higher high and maybe doing something like this to potentially test that $110 to $111 range. That's kind of what I'm hoping PayPal does here. And based about you know, based on these technicals, we're slowly we slowly are getting that bullish cross, which is the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. So I'd watch out for this, guys, um, you know, especially for a potential fill up to 110. I believe that is definitely possible here in the short term. I'm talking about one to two weeks here. Let's say you want to hold it longer as a swing trade. You know, an entry level here I think is great and maybe trimming profits at 110, trimming more profits at 114, you know, probably selling the entire position at 160 to 122. That's kind of how I'd view it if I was looking to long-term um, swing trade this. But overall, PayPal right now, guys, I'm loving it. Roku is the next one that I'm watching here. And actually, I think a subscriber ended up commenting this one on the video last week for me to talk about. And honestly, Roku, as well as Shopify, these two stocks, guys, I believe they're, they, they, they've they got to be two of the hottest stocks in the stock market at this point. You know, these stocks are just running, like, they shouldn't be running this much. It's insane, but they are running this much, right? That's the beauty of the stock market nowadays, right? This stock went from 48 bucks to 176 in the matter of six months. You got to ask yourself, like, <clears throat> did the business really change this much from 40 to 176 for it to warrant this kind of valuation? Of course not, right? This is just running up on hype, right? Just like a lot of stocks nowadays are. And then, boom, it crashed down nearly 76 bucks, you know, fell down all the way to 100 bucks, found support there, which was good, broke above 110, 115, broke above 130, right? And now we're above levels that we haven't been at over the past couple of weeks, right? Since about the beginning to the middle of September. So this pulled 
down here is looking pretty attractive to me, especially if we hold the 142 level. Sure, we might pull down a bit, hold 142, maybe even hold that 50 SMA. And what is that going to do, guys? That's going to provide us a dip opportunity of around 8% to that previous high at around 150. So ideally now, um, oh crap, they are reporting earnings. So that's going to, oh man, that's going to change up a lot of things. So I'm probably not hopping into this before earnings. Um, there's no chance because this is a very volatile stock. Last time they reported earnings, they shot up well, um, well above 20%. It seems like, holy smokes, that's a huge move. If you got in before earnings, guys, last period, you probably made a killing, but don't expect it to do that every time, right? Which is why me not hopping in before earnings, but ideally I'd like to get a dip and hopefully a good earnings and get in after earnings if, if I don't miss the move. That's kind of the goal here on Roku, but ultimately a dip on the 50 SMA four hour chart is looking attractive. So PG is another one I'm watching guys, Procter and Gamble, ticker symbol PG. This one's kind of been chilling at around 123 to 124 bucks quite nicely. And I personally think this one's due for a breakout if it holds this level that I just drew out right around 123, 122. And it also holds that 50 SMA, which is this green line on the four hour chart. And let me tell you why I think that, right? Because last time, well, really there wasn't a last time since we are at all time highs, but it seems like last time we reported earnings and I've talked about this in the videos before and there aren't, the earnings were good. The stock, you know, was kind of in a weird spot up, down, up, down, but all, overall it found its way higher, right? It's found its way higher and to all-time highs. And what did we do now, guys? We reported another good earnings report. Not saying that this is going to push the stock up, but I'm saying that it could potentially push it up because in the past, judging off previous events, it's acted as a positive catalyst. And let's be honest, guys. Procter & Gamble is one of those companies that people view as a quote-unquote safe haven when a lot of, you know, stuff hits the fan, right? When, 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 when uh, growth stocks are getting pooped on, stuff like that. People... People flood to stocks that pay money, uh, dividends rather. They flood to stocks that provide um, kind of like consumer non-cyclical products that are good during any economic cycle. So people might flood to PG here over the next couple of months. And I definitely think this could be running up to the 130s. And some analysts agree with me. They've raised the price target. So honestly, guys, I view this as a nice swing entry, or rather a swing play, but I'm waiting on that nice entry point. Ideally, I think around 122. 123, but you can't really go wrong buying it here, in my opinion. I might even buy some um, just to, uh, you know, scale in as a swing if we hold these levels tomorrow. And if we break out of here, guys, into the 126 level, that's going to be extremely bullish, and I might be buying some at that point as well. So the next stock I want to talk about, which is another one that I'm actually in right now, as well as those UNG calls, is McDonald's, guys. And McDonald's reported earnings earnings were pretty good. The stock dumped aggressively after those earnings and honestly over the past couple of months the stock has been dropping aggressively. Let's see how much on a percentage basis it's dropped since that all time high. About 12-13% and whenever a large blue chip value company that has strong fundamentals, whenever it falls down, in my opinion it's always worth watching to A maybe buy in for a long term position or add more to your long term position or B look to swing trade it if you are a swing trader in the stock market, which I happen to be a swing trader. A lot of the bread and butter trades I make are in stocks, believe it or not, like this, that I scale in over time, whether it's you know every week, every two weeks, and then I sell it for a profit a couple of months later as a swing trade. That's a lot of the money, honestly, that I'm making in the stock market from trading is you know trading blue chip stocks like this. So I'm already in McDonald's, like I said, about 194.50, I think is my average cost and I do plan on adding more to this one if we break above 198 200 bucks and especially above this 50 SMA because let me tell you this if we break into 198 into 200 bucks we're going to be in the next channel which is between 198 and 206 right and my my first place where I'm looking to take profits is going to be at 206 right so ideally my weighted position I want to be around 198 <coughs> excuse me guys, um, to about 200 bucks. And ideally I'd sell 
206, I'd sell some profits at about 4%, maybe a bit higher there at about 213, I'd sell about 5, 6% and so on, right? If it continues to go up. But as of now, you know, I'm looking to add more. I just need to see those technicals um, pan out, honestly, like, like, like I said, right? It needs to just pan out. And um, from there, I'm looking to add money. Another one that I saw in the Discord group chat is FedEx. FedEx at this point, I'm not too sure what they reported in earnings. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I forget. Um, but judging off the chart, it's a falling knife, or rather it was a falling knife after they reported earnings, giving me the notion that you know, those earnings probably weren't too good, right, guys? So the stock dropped. Seems like it found a bottom at 137. Now, just on a strict technical basis, I'm seeing a couple of good things here. I'm seeing a hold at 150, 153, which has roughly, uh, that rough area has been a support in the past multiple different times, right? I'm seeing a bullish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing above that 180 SMA, which we all know is very bullish. And I'm seeing a higher low from the previous low at 130. 37 right here as well as a hold on top of those moving averages so this is looking like it's starting to fill this gap up to 170 bucks. And let me tell you guys, that is a nice profit margin right there, about 6 7%. But one thing that worries me about FedEx is, you know, this stock has just been extremely volatile during the past couple of months, as you guys can see. And this, based on these technicals, it's not too favorable. Um, th these technicals are not favoring a long-term swing trader or somebody that likes holding a stock two months because, or like two, three months, for example, right? Because let's say every two, three month period, it seems like here, if you were to buy and hold two months, you'd probably lose money in a stock like this, which is not something favorable for me. But in the short term, I'm talking about one week, two weeks. Could this be a nice move, maybe up to 160? It sure can, which is what I'm watching. But as a long-term swing trade, there's no way I'd get into this due to the overall trend, right? When I'm looking to get in a long-term swing trade, what do we talk about PG? The trend's beautiful. It's up. That's what I'm looking for, right? McDonald's, although it's getting, you know, killed, you know, the trend is down here, but overall the trend is up. So once we find some sort of bottom, I'm not saying the bottom's going to be here, but once we find a bottom and push up, that's going to be ideal for the swing trader, aka me, right? So that's kind of my thoughts on FedEx. You know, good, good, uh, it's looking good, but overall as a swing trader, I'm not crazy about it, but still worth watching in my my opinion. So let's talk about gold here because a lot of people have been talking about gold. And honestly, guys, you know, gold's in an interesting spot right now. It's really interesting. It's kind of in this wedge here where we're still technically at a lower high, but we're also making higher lows, right? So this is going to be pivotal, um, a pivotal week for, or for gold right here, because let's say we do something like this, where we break up into 1530, we could potentially be filling that gap because that would be a bullish move up to about 1550. But the bears, what the bears want to see here is a dump and a break ultimately below this trend line that's holding based on those higher lows, right? If we see a break like that, that's going to be bearish and we could potentially play JDST, which goes up whenever gold is going down. Well, GDX is what it really trades based upon. GDX, whenever it goes down, um, um, uh, JDST is going up and GDX is what really gold trades based upon or rather um, it tracks gold, right? So that's kind of what my thoughts are on gold. Nothing to expect extravagant here. I'm just looking to see kind of where it goes. Very basic technicals here, guys. If it pops, bullish, falls down, bearish, and especially if we breaks um, into the 14880s, that's extremely bearish in my opinion. That's kind of what I'm looking at here, right? So the last one is going to be PCG. And honestly, guys, this is a stock that I don't really track. And based on these technicals, you know, it's been getting squashed. And let's be honest, um, this is not a swing trader's dream right here. Swing traders look at this and they run away. They don't like seeing trends that are going down, but that doesn't mean you can't make money trading this, right? You can make money two different ways here based on what I'm seeing, right? If we break this 50 SMA, which has been a resistance in the past, this could be a runner up to that 180 SMA. Very simple, right? From 630 up to about nine bucks, which is a ridiculous rally. That's got to be like 30, 40%. That's one way you can make money on this. But 
judging off the technicals, again, a stock that's gone from 28 bucks to $3 there's got to be a reason why that happened. There's no company that goes from 30 to 3 without something negative. So obviously something negative happened that I'm not really too sure about because again, I'm not, um, uh, first of all, I don't really, I'm not a huge, um, uh, um, uh, you know, energy investor. I don't really know too much about PCG and um, that's just not my, my forte. But just judging off this, you could also make money if it continues to go down on whatever negative catalyst that caused it to drop in the first place by playing a put option, right? Put options here, you know, if you like buying, you know, uh, you know, put options where you can make money on a stock's downfall, this could be a, a definite option here. But again, you have to research and I really feel like I'm not even qualified enough to talk about this company because again, I don't really know much about it, but you have to research what caused that drop, the initial drop here and see and really come to a conclusion for yourself whether or not you think that is going to continue. That's kind of what I'm viewing this as. But overall, guys, that's kind of it for this video, right? Watching you guys, watching natural gas, looking for that dip entry tomorrow, potentially. McDonald's is my swing. I'm in UNG, looking to enter uh, Procter & Gamble here, maybe mess around with some Roku short-term play um, before earnings, maybe get in after earnings. These are just some things that I'm watching and going through my head. So if you enjoyed the video, all I ask from you is to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And again, if you want to get that password to the Strive Smart store and enter the store before it opens tomorrow, which is at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard, hit that email link or hit the link, put your email in and I'll send you the password two hours before the store opens so you can go in and maybe buy something if you see anything that you want to buy, right? So if you enjoy the video, um, yeah. Feel free to drop a like, all that good stuff. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for all the support. You guys are awesome. Peace out.